So let's take the derivative of logarithmic functions. So start off with the simple one, the derivative of ln x. Recall, ln x is just a log with base e. e is a special number. We've already seen that when, we, um, when we've looked at the derivative of e to the x, right? Because e to the x, if, um, if y equals e to the x, y prime, the derivative of that, is also e to the x. So that's what's special, one of the special things about e to the x, right? Well, it's also special when, we, when it comes to a base of a logarithm being e. So you'll notice here with this pattern that we're given that the derivative of ln x is just 1 over x. That's sort of cool. We have something that's pretty complicated. Ln x, you know, it looks intimidating. Um, it's sort of related to an exponential. But when we take the derivative of it, it's just 1 over x. I'm not going to go into details about why this is here. We can do that in class. Um, but let's just figure out how to use it. So let's just apply this pattern to this first question here. y equals 3 ln x. Well, just like always, we can just pull the 3 out of the derivative, right? Because it's a constant multiplied by a function. So it's just going to be y prime is equal to 3 times the derivative of ln x, which is just 1 over x. So if we can, simpl we can simplify this a tiny bit. It's not too much work. It's just 3 over x. That's not so bad. Second question. Again, I'd encourage you to pause the video and try these all yourself, actually, before we go too much further. You'll learn better that way. But anyways, moving on. So f prime of x, in this case, the derivative of f of x, um, we have a function inside the lawn now. Right? So what are we going to use? Which one of our derivative rules are we going to use? Well, we know that the derivative of um, ln x is 1 over x, but we have a function inside. So whenever we have a function inside another function, we should be thinking chain rule, right? And essentially how this is going to work, instead of x inside the lawn, we have this 2x plus 5. So it's just like saying 1 over 2x plus 5, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is what the chain rule tells us, right? Derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. So this, the derivative of 2x plus 5 is just 2. There we go. Not too bad. Again, we can simplify by putting that 2 in the numerator, um, but it's the same thing. Moving on, this one looks a little bit complicated. We have ln x minus 3 all to the 5. Um, so let's take the derivative of that using the chain rule again. g prime of x is equal to, well, it's going to be 1 over x minus 3 to the 5, right, times the derivative of what's on the inside, that x minus 3 to the 5. So the derivative of that is going to be 5x minus 3 to the 4 times the derivative of what's inside. This is a chain rule inside a chain rule. And that is just 1, right? The derivative of x minus 3 is just 1. So we don't really need to include that part. So that's the derivative of that. Again, we can simplify if we wanted to. Um, this actually simplifies rather nicely because you'll notice th there's an x minus 3 in the numerator and an x minus 3 in the denominator. So if we were to simplify this, we'd end up with something like this, 5 over x minus 3. That's actually pretty simple, no? Interesting that it turns out like that. We can see why it turns out like that because there's actually another way to solve this problem. If we think of um, our log rules, our rules of logarithms, might be a little bit rusty, but remember what we can do. So I'm just going to rewrite this function. When there's an exponent inside the log, what can we do to that? We can drop it down in front of the log. So this is like saying 5 ln x minus 3. Right? We can do it for log, so we can do it for ln as well, because ln is just a special type of log. So now let's take the derivative of this. Well, the derivative of this, g prime of x, is equal to, again, the 5 is just a constant that we can pull out of the derivative. And then the derivative of x minus 3, ln x minus 3, is 1 over x minus 3 times the derivative of x minus 3, which is just 1. So this also simplifies to 5 over x minus 3. You'll notice that they're the same answer. Pretty interesting that it simplifies that much. Um, but that's why. It's because that 5, lawns allow us to bring that 5 down in front. So it's up to you which way to choose to do it. But clearly, this way is simpler, right? If we realize we can just bring that 5 down in front. So always be looking out for that when we're taking derivatives of logs. 
So what happens if the base isn't E? If we're not using ln, we're just using another log. Um, it's a little bit trickier, not much trickier, just a little bit tricky. Similar to how when we did the derivative of exponentials without base E, with other bases, we have to apply a sort of correction factor to account for the fact that it, the base is not E. Same thing here. So it's very similar, 1 over x, but we also have to multiply the denominator by ln of whatever the base is, right? So 1 over x ln k. Notice how the base has to be a positive number, obviously, because we can't take the log of negative numbers, at least not in the real numbers. So anyways, let's take the derivative of this first thing right here. y equals 3 log base 10 of x. So again, we're going to pull that 3 to the outside of the derivative, so it's just going to sit out there. And then let's take the derivative of log base 10 of x. According to our pattern, what do you think it's going to be? Well, 1 over x times ln of the base, and the base is just 10. There it is. So really, if we simplify this just a little bit, it's going to be 3 over x ln 10. That's it. So again, this just compensates for the fact that the base um, the base is not e, because if we were to plug in e, if base e was here, ln of e is just 1, right? So that part would go away. All right, next question. Again, pause the video here. Try these ones yourself. I think you should be able to handle them by now. Um, unpause when you're ready, and I'll go through them quickly. Okay, so this one, f prime of x, we're going to use the chain rule, right? Because there's a function within a function. So the derivative of log, well, what's the base on this log? Remember, when there is no base shown, we can assume that the base is 10, just like your calculator probably does. So if we do this, it's going to be 1 over 5x, just 1 over the thing inside the log, times ln of the base, so ln 10. And then because we have to use the chain rule here, don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is just 5. There we go. Um, if we simplify this, you'll notice that this happens a lot when you take the derivative of logs. These 5s actually do cancel out. So we end up with something pretty simple, 1 over x ln 10. Okay? Um, let's go on to the next question. g prime of x equals... Well, again, this is a case where we have an exponent inside a log. We're going to assume this whole thing is inside the log, right? So when we have an exponent inside the log, we can actually bring that down in front. So I'm going to rewrite this before we actually take the derivative as 3 log base 2 of 2x plus 5. We saw last time that it makes it simpler, and it does make it simpler here. We have to use the chain rule one less time, right? Because we don't have to worry about the derivative of this thing to the power of 3. So it actually does make it easier. So now let's take the derivative. That 3 we can leave outside of the log. So we're going to get 3 times. Um, now the derivative of log is 1 over x, and x in this case is 2x plus 5, right? times ln of the base, so ln of 2. And then we have to multiply that whole thing by the derivative of the inside, which is just 2. There we go. So there's our answer. Again, we can simplify this. This is a simple simplification. We might as well do it. 6 over 2x plus 5 ln 2. There we go. So notice how if we have the opportunity to take the log or the ln of both sides, in calculus, it's way easier to take the ln of both sides. Just keep the base as e whenever we can, because not only is the derivative of e to the x simpler, but the derivative of ln of x is simpler than any other base. So not only will we have to take the derivatives of things with logs in them, but logs can actually be very useful to, for taking the derivative of other things, and you'll see why. First of all, we have this equation here, y equals x squared plus 3 to the power of x. Is there any rule that we can use to take the derivative of this? You might be tempted to use the chain rule, right? And in the chain rule, we, what we do, and the power rule, what we do is we pull this x down in front, subtract 1, and multiply by the derivative of what's on the inside. You might be fooled into doing that. You actually can't do that because we have an exponent that is a variable. You can only do that when the exponent is a number. Because this is more like an exponential equation, right? There's an exponent that is a variable. 
but it's also like a polynomial equation because we also have an x that's part of the equation, right? So a little bit more complicated, right? How do, we, how do we take the derivative of something like this? Do we need another rule for it? Turns out we actually don't need another rule. We can use what we know about logs. The thing about logs is that um, logs have some useful properties, such as the log rule that you can bring down that exponent, right? The power rule for logs. So in order to apply that rule, we need to take the log of this equation, right? If we were able to take the log of this, we can bring down that x in front. We unfortunately can't just take the log of this side, though. We also need to take the log of this side, right? Because whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we can actually rewrite this equation if we take the log of both sides. Actually, we're going to take the ln of both sides because it's easier, as we saw. So ln y equals ln x squared plus 3 all to the power of x. So I've just taken the ln of both sides. Now, using our laws of logs, you know I can bring that x down in front. So it actually looks like this. ln y equals x ln x squared plus 3. Can we now take the derivative of that? Well, we know the right side, right? Let's start by taking the derivative of that. Um, the derivative of x ln x squared plus 3, what do we have to use here? We have to use the power rule, right? Because we have, sorry, the product rule is what I meant to say. Because we have two things that are multiplied by each other, two functions that are multiplied by each other, x and ln x squared plus 3. So when we do the power rule, it's going to be derivative of the first thing, which is just 1, times the derivative of the second thing, which is ln x squared plus 3, plus the first thing, x, times the derivative of the second thing. We know the derivative of ln x squared plus 3 is going to just be 1 over x squared plus 3 times the derivative of what's inside the log, so just 2x. There we go. Are we done? Well, not actually. We took the derivative of the right side. But what's, a, what's happened on the left side? The problem is that this equation is no longer explicit in terms of y. Right? It's not y equals, it's ln y equals. So we actually have to take the, the derivative of the left side as well, implicitly, with respect to x. Remember how to do that? To take the implicit derivative, we have to take the derivative of ln y, which is just 1 over y, and then we have to multiply by dy dx. Right? Because we have to use the chain rule. The derivative of y is dy dx, so we have to actually multiply by the chain rule there, um, or by dy uh, dx there. So now, in order to find the derivative dy by dx, that's what we're trying to find, we have to actually multiply both sides of the equation by y. So essentially, the answer is dy by dx is equal to, I'm just going to simplify a little bit, ln x squared plus 3 plus x uh, actually, I'm going to simplify that as well. It's going to be 2x squared over x squared plus 3. But this whole thing, since we multiply both sides of the equation by y, is going to be multiplied by y, right? So that's essentially the answer. Now, sometimes it is convenient to have just x's in our answer. Sometimes it's okay to leave this just as a y here. But sometimes it's, okay, it's better to actually leave that out um, and turn it into an x or a thing with x's in it. So we can actually rewrite this as the same thing, ln x squared plus 3 plus 2x squared over x squared plus 3 times, instead of y, we know y is just equal to x squared plus 3 to the power of x. So we can just write that, x squared plus 3 to the power of x. There, now our derivative is only in terms of x. This last step where we went from a y to this isn't always necessary, especially if we're just plugging in values for x and y. It's sometimes way easier just to leave this as a y here. So it's going to depend on the question whether you want to go from this to this. Okay, you might be asking yourself, why have I included this example in this lesson? It just looks like a polynomial that we got to take the derivative of, and it is. But how are you going to do that? You could use the product rule four times, use the, the, the product rule for four terms. It's going to get messy, though. It's going to get big. There is an easier way, and that is by using our f 
friends, the laws of logs. So just bear with me for a second. I'm going to start by taking the lawn of both sides. I'm actually going to change the f of x to a y too, just to make it easier to write. So lawn y equals lawn x plus 2, x plus 5, 2x plus 2, 3x minus 3 cubed. OK, how does this help us? Well, if you remember, one of our properties of logs is that when you have, just going to do this off to the side, when you have log or lawn of two things multiplied, x, y, something like that. Do you remember what we can do with that? We can actually break those up, ln x plus ln y. Remember that? So that's our product rule for logs. There's a quotient rule for logs too, right, which is ln x over y is equal to ln x minus ln y. Um, both of these will be useful. But in this case, maybe you can see where I'm going. Can we make this simpler? We can, right? All we have to do is break up each one of these terms because they're all sort of separately multiplied inside the, the, uh, the ln, right? So we can just break these up. ln x plus 2 plus ln x plus 5 plus ln 2x plus 2 plus and the last one, we can actually bring that 3 down in front, right? 3 ln 3x minus 3 ln y. Now, this doesn't look more simple, but think about taking the derivative of each of these terms. That's super easy, right? Just like it's super easy to take the derivative of the left side here. Much easier than taking the derivative of this whole thing. So what we can actually do is do it by parts. We essentially have broken up this problem into multiple smaller separate derivatives. And whenever you can do that, it actually becomes a lot easier. You're a lot less likely to make a mistake. So ln x plus 2. The derivative of that is 1 over x plus 2 times the derivative of the inside, which is just 1, plus 1 over x plus 5 times 1 again. The derivative of x plus 5 is just 1, plus 1 over 2x plus 2 times the derivative of the inside, which is 2, plus 3 times 1 over 3x minus 3, times the derivative of the inside, which is 3. Cool. Can we take the derivative of the left side as well? It's actually the same as the question above. The derivative of y, of ln y, will be 1 over y times, using the chain rule, dy by dx, with our implicit differentiation. There, that's it. That's the derivative. Now, we can simplify. Well, actually, we haven't found the derivative explicitly yet. We can move the y to the other side, right, by multiplying both sides by y. So if we want to simplify that, dy by dx is equal to, and I can simplify each term as we go, right? This is just going to be 1 over x plus 2 plus 1 over x plus 5 plus 2 over 2x plus 2. Yeah, we could cancel out 2s there, but I'm just going to leave it, plus 9 over 3x minus 3. We could also cancel out 3s there, but I'm just going to leave it for, um, for the sake of keeping this example shorter. And then we have to multiply this side by y, right? Because we had to multiply by y in order to, to isolate the dy by dx. There we go. This is a case where we could plug in y back in as this thing, but it's going to get really long and complicated, so we can just work with this the way it is. Wasn't that a lot simpler than if we had to distribute these or apply the product rule here? I think it was. OK, I want you to try this question. Really give it a good go. See if you can figure out how to take the derivative of this um, using maybe a similar technique to the question above. Pause the video here. Give it a shot. You can unpause when you're ready. Here's my solution to the problem. I took the lawn of both sides and used my laws of products and quotients for, for logs in order to separate this out, right? So I basically, I skipped a few steps in here to see if you can figure out what I did. Um, I basically took the log of this plus the log of this. These are multiplied, right? So you add together the logs or the lawns. And then this is in the denominator. So it's like subtracting the lawn of that, right? Then I took the derivative. And again, I skipped a few steps here. See if you can figure out exactly what I did. But essentially, I took the, the derivative of each of these separately and then simplified by multiplying by y on both sides. I left it just as a y here. Didn't want to write, rewrite out this whole thing because usually this is OK for a final answer, especially when we're just plugging in values. 
You could also solve this problem by using the quotient or the product rule and the quotient rule of derivatives, but I think it gets a little bit more messy. You end up here with something actually that's not too bad, right? If you had to plug in a number there, that's not the end of the world. It's not that pretty, but it's not the end of the world. Taking the derivative of this, you would have to use product rule, chain rule, quotient rule. It would get rather big rather quickly. There you go.